Today I'm going to show you how to lay carpet in your own home. We'll start with the floor preparation, the installation of the smooth edge, the underlay and finally the carpet. At the end of the day you're going to end up with a beautiful room of carpet that you've done yourself that you can be proud of and you can impress your friends. We've just come home from Bunnings with a quality carpet. Now we want to install it in our room. What we need is a bit of installation equipment which comes in the form of an underlay, smooth edge, doorway bars and of course you need the installation tools. You can buy that in a pack which has a knee kicker, a bolster and a utility knife but most important is the safety equipment. It comes in the form of a pair of knee pads to protect the knees from the hard floor and a pair of safety goggles if you're working on concrete. Carpet comes in a broad loom width which is 3.66. comes in a variety of materials, nylon, polypropylene, wool or a combination of both. All these can be laid on a good quality foam underlay and installed with our installation kit. Now that we've got all our equipment together, we need to measure the room to see how much carpet we need. To do that, we measure the length by the width and that'll give us our run of carpet. An easy way is to go to the Bunnings website and use the flooring calculator. Okay, the next part of the operation is floor preparation. The first thing we can do with the floor is to clean it up. Get a broom and give it a good sweep or a vacuum cleaner to get rid of a lot of the dust and go over it with a scraper, removing any sort of drop plaster or cement that happens to be on the floor. If it's a concrete floor, go over it, fill any voids in, or if there's any dips, fill that in, give it a nice uh, smooth surface. Because let's face it, anything that's under the carpet will reflect through when the job's finished, and we don't want that. Okay, now comes the fun part. This is putting down the smooth edge. This is a piece of smooth edge. It's got uh, nails on the in the smooth edge, it's got a um, serrated edge on it. This particular one is for timber. If I was putting the smooth edge on a concrete floor, it would have a toughened, hardened nail. It looks very similar, uh, but the hardened nail for concrete is black. So all we do with this is just lay it down in front of the skirting boards, ready to nail in. All we do here is we've got the smooth edge with the pins facing into the wall. We can take a pair of secateurs or um, tin snips, uh, cut the smooth edge to the right length where the wall is, just making sure that the smooth edge is 6 to 8 mil off the wall. That depends on the carpet thickness. If it's a thin carpet, put it a little bit closer. If it's a thick carpet, keep it out. Once you've done that, make sure that the same distance is obtained all around, all around the room and then you can start knocking the nails in. Usually it only takes one hammer to hit the nail in, take two if you're comfortable, but just make sure you don't hit the skirting with the hammer, otherwise you can't solve it when you finish the job. Okay, now that we've put the smooth edge down, we can start installing the underlay. Now that we've put the bulk of the underlay in, it's time to fill in the small bits. What we do, just lay it down, just roll the roll out, turn it back if it's an excessive amount and pull it over towards the wall. Just make sure that the two joining pieces butt up together and there's no gaps. What we can do then is just take the excess off the underlay just to make it a little easier to handle and that part of the job's done. Okay, now that we've put the remainder of the underlay down, it's time to trim it. What we can use is a utility knife with a nice sharp blade. Basically what we do is put the knife on and trim it round to the back of the smooth edge. Okay, now that we've got all the uh, underfelt in position, it's time to anchor it down. Why we do that is because when we uh, stretch the carpet, if you don't anchor the underfelt, it'll ride up under the carpet and possibly get it onto the, onto the smooth edge. Uh, we use a stabler because it gives us a broader area to anchor it on. Okay, if we're working on a, uh, on a concrete floor, the technique of anchoring the underlay is a little bit different. Because we can't staple into the concrete, we've got to use a tape. Uh, you can use uh, either duct tape or just masking tape. What we do is lay the tape uh, mid the joint and just follow the joint along to the end of the room. Now that we've got all the underlay and the smooth edge down, it's time to bring the carpet in. Sometimes the carpet can be quite heavy, so you might need a second pair of hands. 
Okay, now that we've got the carpet rolled out in the room, uh, a couple of things you've got to look for. Just be careful of the walls that you don't scratch them or mark them. And have a look at the pole direction again. Make sure the carpet is running the right way. Otherwise the colour will look different from different rooms. What we do is push the carpet into position. Uh, the carpet will fold up at the edge. So what we'll do, we'll take a scallop out of the end so the carpet fits to the corner nice and neat. With your uh, utility knife, make a, a small cut in either direction and push that in. With your carpet gripper, just position that into the corner and with your knee, you don't really have to hit it that hard, but just give it a bit of a nudge and when you can feel it riding over the pins, hold it down with your hand and then just work along. Probably come along about five or six hundred until you can feel it starting to grip. Just to make doubly sure, uh, use a hammer and run along the pins and you can feel the pins actually grabbing the carpet keeping it neatly in place so that it doesn't pop up off again. Okay, now that we've completed one wall, we need to go to the opposite wall and use the same technique to stretch the carpet up the room. Once that's done, we can do the following wall and lastly, the last wall. Just by using the knee kicker in the same manner, just working along the wall and following up with the hammer, that way they, the carpet stays on the pins and won't pop off anymore. Right, once we've got the carpet attached onto the smooth edge, it's time to trim the wall in. What we need to do that with is a bolster and a utility knife. Just make sure the blade in the knife is nice and sharp. Pull the side of the carpet back, make a diagonal cut, 10 mil from the wall, a couple of cuts, and then go along with your bolster and push it into the back side of the smooth edge. That's why they call the smooth edge smooth edge, because it gives a good finish. Right, we've come to the end of the day and we've finished our room and it's looking absolutely superb. We should be very pleased with ourselves. We've only got one little thing to do and that's to finish off the doorways. We can either finish it off to either a tile edge or a timber edge. The carpet's tucked in the same as what we did around the edge of the actual walls. And if we're not happy with that, we can actually install a, uh, a floor trim. The bars come in gold, bronze and pewter and are available at Bunnings. Just ask your specialist when you're going to the flooring area. Well there you go, that wasn't so hard was it? The room looks absolutely fantastic, it's a DIY project you can be absolutely proud of and you can have a little bit of a boast to your friends.